This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for them for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, give us the strength to work through our pain and our worries. Help us bring them to you, the ultimate source of peace and liberation. Amen. I've been into quoting lately, uh, so here's another quote. Uh, the Christian way of life does not take away our loneliness. It protects and cherishes it as a pr precious gift. I'll say it again. The Christian way of life does not take away our loneliness. It protects and cherishes it as a precious gift. That's a quote from Father Henry Nowen. How many of you know Henry Nowen? Well, there's another, another book that we need to get out there. That's from his book, The Wounded Healer. He goes on to say how that statement isn't what people want to hear. We want to get rid of our loneliness not cherish it. He says that we want to hear that the church and ultimately God will remove our loneliness by giving us community. But instead, the church never turns out to be that sedative that we were hoping it to be. Instead, the church is a place of hope that gives us strength to work through our loneliness, through our suffering, through our pain but it never seems to get rid of it. Much of our existence on this planet is seeking relief from pain and suffering and loneliness. We seek this. We all want distractions so that we can feel better or forget the problems that surround us. We watch TV to forget. We play video games to escape. We scroll on Facebook and TikTok, and somehow that makes me feel worse. But we do all of these things because we think it will make us feel better or it'll distract us from our problems. The human reaction to pain is not to cherish it, it is to avoid it, to find something to take our minds off of it. And much of our existence on this planet is pain. In our gospel story today, we see people just like us going to Jesus for help for healing, wanting that quick fix, that immediate relief from our ailments. And I'm not going to lie, I want this too. I don't like not feeling good. I don't like feeling sad. I don't like being lonely. I too am wounded and want Jesus to take my woundedness away. I too am blinded by expectations that will never be met. So many of us, myself included, think that if this thing that we have Whatever it is gets better, then we'll finally be happy. Or maybe we think if I get this computer or this house or this car or maybe a new job or more money, then I will finally be happy. But that almost never happens. 
and yet we still keep thinking it will. Us humans are always unsatisfied. Or maybe if we just find the right church community, get just the right sermon, then our lives will be better. Or maybe we leave the church. We denounce religion. Find a secular group. Then we'll finally have peace. But we all know the silent truth. No matter what we do, we will always be disappointed to some degree. The thing we want, we will never find. And that's disappointing. <laughs> And Henry Nouwen is trying to tell us that the church and even God will not solve this problem for us. But what the church does, what God does, is shows us that it is okay to be disappointed. It is okay to be disappointed. It's okay to not be okay. And Henry Nouwen is trying to tell us that we should sit in that. Feel the dissatisfaction. Feel the loneliness. Be disappointed. Because it is here. It's not going away. And through the gospel, we were, where we learn this truth about the cosmos... that God sits with us and walks with us in these feelings and circumstances. In today's gospel, we see the crowds begging for Jesus' help. Overnight, he becomes a local celebrity because he's the one who's fixing all of our problems, healing and saving souls. The people want what Jesus can provide. But Jesus knows that they are just band-aids. He knows what the true purpose of his existence on this earth is. Everyone is looking for you, the disciples say. Where, are you serious? You're going to go off and pray when there's all of these people in need of your help? And Jesus doesn't even answer them. <laughs> he ignores the question and says, yeah, actually, we're going to go to this next town. Everyone is looking for you. Jesus knows that these are just band-aids. He is not here to heal every ailment, but to heal our souls. When the crowds stop seeing Jesus as God, as Messiah, as someone who is there to walk with them and be with them and instead turn into just another doctor or miracle worker. Jesus said it's time to move on. Because Jesus is more than a miracle worker. This fleshy body of ours will always disappoint us. We are fragile. It will fail, and it will cause us pain. A fix today will only provide temporary relief for tomorrow until it breaks down again. And Jesus knows this. So he is more concerned about the eternal, the soul that resides within us. If we can train our soul, if we can look beyond the flesh, and see the beauty that lies within and around us. It is there where true joy and purpose and existence are made known. For Jesus, healing the physical is secondary to the relationship with the Father, with God. Prayer is the lifeline for Jesus. It's his ultimate <laughs> desire. Prayer is what matters most to Jesus. Because it is truly the only thing that connects him, not only to God, but to his own eternity. It redirects his focus from quick fixes 
to being a celebrity to true formation, true life-changing miracles that can only occur through the proclamation of the truth of who God is and what God has done for humanity and what God is calling humanity into. A life eternal. Father Nowen goes on to say, and I quote, making one's own wounds a source of healing, therefore does not call for a sharing of superficial personal pains, but for a constant willingness to see one's own pain and suffering as rising from the depth of the human condition, which all humans share. Essentially, Father Nowen is saying, are we a resurrection people or not? Do we dwell on the sins and the pains of the world and allow them to control us? Or do we use our pain and our sins as opportunities to rise from the ashes and create new life, new relationships, and a newfound faith in what God is calling us to be? Do we believe that all humans suffer, no matter our circumstances? Or are we convinced that only I suffer and we start the pain Olympics? Jesus is calling us into a new way of thinking. He wants us to see that pain and suffering will always be around us, that this world that we call home is broken, but there is hope, there is a better life, not a pain-free life, but a better life, a life that is capable of sitting in the pain of loneliness, of suffering, and of disappointment, a life that can see beyond the pains of today for the glory that is to come, a life that is less focused on distraction from our pain and more focused on using our pain and our suffering to connect with others, to heal with others, and ultimately grow in our relationship with the one who suffered for us, Jesus. Suffering will never feel good, ever. But Jesus is calling us to be okay with that. I am under no delusion that this is easy. And honestly, I don't like to hear it myself. But as I've, other preachers have said, the best sermons are the ones that preach to you. And I'm convicted. <laughs> I don't like this. But it is what Jesus is asking of us. And as a follower of Jesus, we need to hear this. And it is our calling to work toward the life that Jesus is calling us to be. The being okay with not being okay. So maybe prayer should be less about fixing our ailments and more about giving us the strength with being okay with not being okay. Let us follow Jesus' example. Let us pray for acceptance of our lives. Let prayer be the first word spoken for the day. Let our heavenly relationship give us purpose and hope so that we can work through our pain, through our loneliness, through our suffering, rather than trying to avoid it at all costs. Because then, maybe, we can become wounded healers as Father Henry Nowen so eloquently coined. Amen.